I want to do a quick demonstration um, showing how we could scan a feature that was broken off of a mold and um, mirror it across the center line over here to the other side and then actually machine it. Uh, of course we could rotate it or scale it. There's uh, some nice things we can do with STL data um, but let's just assume that this feature is missing. We scanned this one and now we want to mirror that across and then machine this side. Okay so first we're going to bring in the scan data. Okay, and you can see by the zebra stripes here that it's a nice scan. Everything fits line for line. Whenever you see that bleed through, that means that we're real accurate. Okay, and then um, we're going to do edit, copy, or actually move, mirror. And we're going to mirror the STL data about the center plane. Okay, now it's over on this side. Uh, but presently it's not really inside the insert file. Uh, here's the insert, here's the STL data. Next I want to merge that together. So I activate the insert file and I'm going to pull the STL data into it by doing file import geometry. I just pick on the STL data and choose import now if we turn this off, we'll see that this is, is in fact inside this file. Okay, next um, let's go to NC file and we'll bring in this insert. So let's hit save and close. And then we're going to do a new NC file. We're going to load model and that would be this insert right here okay here's the STL data that we're about to machine but remember this was broken off of a mold so uh, probably what's going to happen is we're going to have um, a square not square a rectangle uh, slug screwed or welded into position here uh, to actually create that. So we're going to um, simulate that uh, by actually drawing the stock. Um, so here let's just go through a couple of steps. We're going to create a new toolpath folder which is a collection for our cutter paths. We'll give it a clearance height. Um, we're going to go to stock <clears throat> and we're going to use a contour now, by the way, this is ready to uh, select a bounding box. If this were the beginning of the job and we were machining it, this would be the, the uh, beginning state of the insert. But like I said, we're actually doing a repair this time. So we're going to do a contour. We're going to go into the sketcher. Uh, we'll draw. Um, I guess we can draw on this plane right here. And we're going to go to the top view. And we're going to sketch the size for our stock. So let's say that this is as big as our material is that we're going to be machining away. Okay, then we pick the high point. And believe it or not, we can actually pick on the SDL data. That's kind of a big deal. Uh, a lot of packages don't allow you to select. Um, scan data, uh, but Symmetron does. The lower point is here, and if we do a preview, we can actually see what that looks like. Okay, so here's the stock statement of what we're about to machine. All right, then uh, we're going to create a procedure. The part surfaces uh, will just select, well it doesn't really matter, we can select the whole block if we want to uh, because it's going to be cutting locally where the stock is defined. Alright, and then we're going to go grab a cutter, 
Uh, let's go to the library. And we'll take a, well, let's just take all these cutters. It'd be easier for a couple more procedures after this one. Um, let's start out with probably a half inch cutter. This should be good. All right, and then I should have to fill out too much here because a lot of this is uh, driven by formula. So based on my tool size, it should already have a pretty good down step and side step and everything like that. Um, maybe we'll want to leave 20 thousandths on the walls and uh, how about 10 thousandths on the floors. And the uh, down step is 50, side step is 300. This stuff should all be good. Check the RPM and feed rate. Um, actually, I can right click here and say set uh, machine parameters and the values will come in from my library. Um, but I'm going to change this to 4,000 and we'll do 75 inches a minute. Okay, and then hit save and calculate. And we're going to do a copy and paste while it's calculating. And here we're going to change the tool to a quarter inch cutter. And save and calculate. And while that's calculating, we'll copy and paste and we'll grab a 1 8 cutter and save and calculate okay so that quickly we got three programs going we got a half inch cutter, a quarter inch cutter, and a 1 8 cutter and they're all tracking the stock model in that local area where that piece broke off and we're cutting the STL data we haven't done any resurfacing Okay, so here's the half inch cutter, here's the quarter inch cutter, and there's the one eighth cutter. You can see it's just going in and machining out those areas uh, where the bigger tool didn't go. Now if I were to copy and paste this again, and this time we change the uh, amount that we're leaving, Let's just say we're going to cut it just five thousandths off, five thousand skin. This result will be a lot different because uh, it's going to want to recut the whole STL data. And this will be more like a semi finishing procedure. Well, you can see how the stock model plays a really important role in uh, quickly creating tool paths that are highly efficient. Okay, and there's the semi-finished pass where we're leaving five thousandths. And of course, I could quickly uh, make that zero. We could do use a ball cutter and uh, do a lace cut or something. But that's a real quick, easy demonstration of how we can work with STL data super efficiently. Thanks for watching.